four and a half year review of usage of the Galaxy S10. So I got the Galaxy S10 in 2019, it came out half a year before. I decided to, instead of getting another camera, which I, well, I did not have a camera because I broke the old one, I instead would kind of use part of the money in order to get a better phone and try to also record videos for the internet on the phone. It was a big bet, but it kind of worked out, so the Galaxy S10 surprised me really much with the camera quality. It was kind of the first phone that actually had a very good camera in my eyes. Previously I had the HTC Desire I, I also had the HTC Desire X, and before that I had Sony Ericsson phone which, well, had Sony Ericsson cameras. Now, with the phone I was able to basically record and also use the audio because the internal microphones were also quite good already. Now, the camera was also quite good already and it also, it also had this bokeh effect. In the front camera it has this bokeh effect but also in the back camera it has this bokeh effect. It has three different lenses. The first one is a wide-angle lens, then you have the normal range lens and then you have a 2x zoom-in lens. You also have a flash on the back and you also additionally have kind of this sensor which allows you to record your pulse on the back of the device which I think is quite reasonable. There are also third-party apps like Veltery which allow you to record your HRV with just the phone. You don't need an additional device, even though Veltory, Veltory, for example, has also an app for Android. And so you can also have your HRV measured on Android because Samsung Health doesn't record HRV or at least does not give you an HRV readout in case you're interested in this. So first of all, the phone itself was mostly interesting for me as a normal phone. I also wanted just a not very big phone. So in when I was still in my teenage years, the idea of the phablet came up. So Samsung came out with a phone that was like way bigger than any phone before. And this is basically still one of these phones. It's still a phablet, even though this is the normal version. The Galaxy S10, 512 gigabytes in, I think the color is called Onyx or something like this. So this is what it looks like on the back and this is what it looks like on the front. So. The cameras kind of surprised me, they also allowed me to now zoom in to an image without without uh, using digital zoom. And so I was able to shoot a kind of just a little bit of picture here and there just with my phone in my pocket. Previously I also had done this and I also have been kind of taking pictures since I was kind of a little, a little child. I got my first camera around age 7 or 8 and this was the first digital camera and then I eventually got a Sony Ericsson but of course the, this didn't compare in terms of the digital in terms of the camera quality at all to a normal pocket camera. I then had two other pocket cameras and then I got the 60 I used a little bit of the 60D then the 70D. I then I uh, wanted also a phone that would allow me to record somewhat reasonable pictures and of course now this was kind of the phone. So I got it in 2019 and I'm still using this phone. I eventually had the an issue with the USB-C connector because I worked as a bike courier and I had to constantly charge my phone. I also had this issue with the, the batteries constantly running hot, mostly mostly maybe because it was 30 degrees, I had to charge the device constantly and so the batteries would constantly overheat. I also tried a couple of times to record to record video while, uh, while basically on a bike ride. So I would record maybe a 30 minute video with me just talking, not on a bike ride, but on a, a car ride. So I would have mounted the phone and some, the sun sometimes would hit the phone and also had the phone to be charged. Now there is also this problem if you have the phone charged at the same time as using basically the, the headphone in. And this is also a big upside of this device that it has a headphone in. So this is also a microphone in, which means that you can have the device in theory at least charged at the same time as also recording audio through this. And if you don't have a still a headphone, a headphone jack then you cannot really do this unless you then have basically a small hub which then allows you to have USB-C in and also so USB charging in and also then maybe USB-C so if it's a USB-C microphone then USB-C in but also maybe not a uh, USB-C microphone, so an analog microphone, which then would go over the microphone in into the device, which then would combine in this USB-C connector. So because I had the, an issue with this, I, I basically ordered a replacement phone. I again got the device refurbished. I also got the initial device refurbished, so it cost a little bit less compared to the original one or compared to getting it new. I also opted for the 512 gigabyte version because I eventually also with the previous phones always had the issue that I just wanted to constantly install new apps and then I didn't maybe delete the old ones and I just did not want to spend some part of my week, maybe two hours a week, uh, deciding which apps I no longer needed because I still think, uh, I often still think that I need this app and I don't want to uninstall it, just similarly to how I constantly need to close, <laughs> close programs on my computer because otherwise it just runs too slowly. So. 
I used it then in order to record kind of my, my first videos for the internet. And previously this was just not possible. I did have a Canon ES70D, but I did have a lens which had this internal which had basically lens noise with the motors focusing and then this was recorded and the internal mic so I would have needed an, an additional mic but also I was somewhat financially constrained so I didn't just go out and buy like additional microphones and also the microphone selection was not that good back then now I bought the Rode Video Mic Go 2 which is a USB mic it also allows me to have it mounted up here with this Wicotti mount which is somewhere here and I also am using it as of currently as a USB microphone and well to record videos now the front camera does not have it does not have basically different angles now it it has two different software angles so it allows you to also record portrait and also basically the portrait mode after i got the, the device initially the portrait mode only was available for the back but with now the device also then after a software update being able to record portrait mode in the front i was now also able to for example record myself in a car and have the background blurred which was kind of a thing that was very useful, I would have to say, because then you can just blur the background and it doesn't really matter so much where you are. And this was, I think, quite a useful feature. I used it for a couple of videos. The problem was that it was not very consistent. So if sometimes a car drove by, then the car would actually kind of be visible and I wanted not to everybody to know where I actually was driving. And so I eventually deleted these videos. Nonetheless, at least in theory, this now was possible. And also now, because I had this feature and because I also used it sometimes, Actually, on a couple of the first videos I posted, I got often questions about, not often, a couple of questions I got about the camera, which I would be using, and I answered, it is just my phone, and I am using this, and it makes it look like it is actually kind of a professional camera, because we associated the look of the blurred background with a professional camera. And it also just had a very reasonable look, also, in terms of low-light performance. Now, I am using video lights, and I also have been using video lights mostly, but also if I and um, somewhere else it just is somewhat reasonable I would say. The low light performance I actually would say is better compared to my Canon EOS M50 with a similar with a similar focal uh, length on it. What also is quite useful is the dual speaker so it has a speaker at the at the bottom and then the second secondary speaker is here. It also I think has two microphones so it has a microphone I think the first one is up here and the second one is down here. Now what you also find on this phone is an SD card slot which is quite convenient because the newer phones don't have SD card slots any longer. So what I do have in here is 512 gigabytes of SD card storage at least in theory because in practice I think my 512 gigabytes card eventually didn't work any longer and so I inserted a 128 or 256 gigabyte card which means that I now in addition to having the 512 gigabytes of internal memory for installing apps I also do have this additional memory which I can use for installing not for installing but for storing pictures and so on and so I never really have storage issues but sometimes I also did get rid of additional audio files I had on my phone because well I then switched to the 128 but I'm not entirely sure actually what is in here right now and I also it also doesn't really matter similar to how it doesn't really matter how many apps I install the phone might get slower so in terms of the the latency of usage I would say or just how fast the phone is in the beginning it was actually quite fast so it was like a different experience but now over time it got slower and slower and slower so it's now four and a half years after the release or actually five years after the initial release but I bought it four and a half years ago so in the beginning so there is this quick basically you can have the camera quick launch if you double press the power button and in the beginning it would kind of be like this and then it would launch right away and so in the beginning I used this constantly but now because there is this latency and also if you power up the phone it often takes one or two minutes for the phone to actually react at all to what you are doing. So if you want to open up apps and so on and so forth you power up the phone and then you have to wait for one or two minutes. Now while this might be kind of a big downside there is also I think an upside to this which is kind of that this is more and more turning into a dumb phone which is still having which is still is having a somewhat reasonable camera. In terms of the camera experience in the beginning the, the photos were often sharp and they were clear and now if I'm taking even pictures outside what I often find is I think due to the latency uh, is that I take a picture and then afterward I see that every third picture I actually took is kind of completely blurred and I think what the reason why this is the case is that I take the picture and I kind of assume that the, the, the phone already has taken the picture but because of the increased latency it now has after now four and a half years there is just an element of well there is a longer duration between me thinking that I take the picture and then I already pack the phone away and then it's basically the image is blurred so 
I took a picture of a couple of trees because there was this thing on the outside that fell off and I found it interesting and one third of the pictures were were not usable. The sim a similar situation would be if I'm in the grocery store and I, I and I take a picture of the macros on the back of a product and then one third or maybe sometimes even half of the pictures are just not usable and I still have not adapted and maybe I also don't want to wait five seconds or something like this for the phone to take then a picture. This is kind of a very big downside and it has kind of reduced using uh, it has kind of reduced my phone usage, not my phone usage, but my usage of this phone as a camera outside just when taking pictures. And well, often also if you want, just want to take a quick selfie with somebody and then you have it up there and it's just like, hello, are you still there? On the, on the upside though, the more my phone is using, so it depends of course what my phone usage is. If my phone usage is actually quite healthy, then well, it would be very useful if my phone is actually kind of better and also has more computational power or, or would have less latency. But then, because there seem to be companies that kind of uh, compete for the, my phone real estate, kind of for the space or for the display of, well, whatever they want to display in my pocket, more and more I am thinking that maybe that's actually also to a certain extent at least a feature, that I have kind of a more and more slower phone, which means that I am, I basically, am incentivized to use my phone less. Now, if I wanna take a picture, then, well, that's not that great. If I also wanna standing in front of a packing station station, and I just wanna open up email, the email loads for 45 seconds, or sometimes 60 seconds or something like this, then it's also not that great. But on the other side, if I, well, want to do anything like browsing, and there is just a higher latency, then it just makes more sense to not use my phone. So what I find is that I often use my phone in a position where I actually don't want to be in. This could be sitting down somewhere on the floor, and then I'm looking down, and as Andrew Huberman explained on his podcast, if you are kind of not at eye level or looking up, then you are decreasing alertness by the opportunity cost of, well, not looking at eye level or up, which would be up would be increasing your alertness slightly. So in terms of my monitor, for example, I also have it at eye level or actually slightly higher. Higher after I listen to the Huberman episode on basically the work setup, the workstation setup, and then I implemented or tried to implement this as well as I could. So if I'm in a position where I'm actually looking on my phone, then I'm usually like this. I seldom hold up my phone like this. And so this is actually a situation which I want to avoid due to, due to the opportunity cost of doing something more productive in this time. So unless I am taking pictures on my phone, I actually don't want to spend that much time on my phone. I am trying to reduce my texting. I actually, a couple of months ago, decided to delete WhatsApp, which is kind of the standard messaging app in Europe. And this has been one of the biggest, I, I said, I, not I said, I would have not imagined how big this impact would have been. And this has been a decision, it has been a decision that was quite difficult because there were so many, there, there is the network effect of, well, cutting off that many, that many people that potentially would only message you on WhatsApp. And then there are these situation in, situations in which you want to message someone, but they are only on WhatsApp and so on and so forth. But this has kind of introduced a, a period of, well, just being able to think clearer again, not not having to constantly combat basically me using my phone that much and sitting down and looking through all of my WhatsApp chats and looking at the profile pictures of people on WhatsApp. And because I am, so I'm now using SMS, but I'm also using email still. And well, many people don't have SMS <laughs> and also not many people have profile pictures on there. So I found this is kind of a, a less, uh, less demanding attention demanding experience with which brings me less out of my normal thinking less out of my normal workflow so I to a certain extent have to say I think that or can can conclude out of this I also don't want to paint this particularly only positive but I think uh, deciding to to basically quit whatsapp using or using whatsapp and to delete my account even though I had years of of thousands of of messages and also still kind of maybe pictures in it and kind of also history with certain with certain people where I had chats that went back years basically and I just deleted all of them. So there are these dumb phones on the market which are basically a normal smartphone but then it's intentionally way worse. But what if instead of 
intentionally buying a worse phone and then potentially also standing in in a train and then waiting 40 seconds or something like this for my train ticket to show up and also potentially not being even able to use something like this i actually recently met someone in a train i actually met multiple people and i talked a little bit with them in the train about basically their flip phones so the first person had a flip phone and the second person also just did never switch to a smartphone and they still are somewhat able to navigate through life. Now, I often can't really imagine how you would get a, a, a digital ticket or something like this, and then, of course, now you go to the vending machine, this still exists, and also in Europe, cash is still a thing which you can use, but nonetheless, I would f probably find it very, very hard to not use a phone. For example, if I'm using Samsung Health, where do I use Samsung Health? On my phone, because, well, there is not a web version. And for many apps, there are not web versions available. And so this meant that I would not be able to use that many apps. But then again, also, before I had a smartphone, I actually did also do things. I also was able to do banking, for example, without my phone. And if I do banking, for example, on my phone, then on my phone it's potentially worse than on my computer. On my computer, I think that I usually have kind of a more rational approach to doing things, whereas on my phone I often am more impulsive. Maybe also due to the other social media apps that for some periods of my life were installed on my phone. I sometimes used to watch YouTube videos on my phone. I decided that this was not really a good idea, but then the other alternative would be to watch on my notebook. Now, this is not so much about the Galaxy S10 anymore, which I realized, so I think I will cut this thread about using potentially my phone less or trying to incentivize myself to use my phone less at this point in time. It is a device, I think, that still holds up quite well. Apart from the processing power, apart from the camera, which is mostly, I think, due to the due to the limitation or the increasing limitation in processing power and speed and latency is becoming worse and worse. But, uh, well, the camera is kind of still the same. And now, I actually, recently my father got uh, the newest Galaxy device and I also had the camera and also, so there is a distinction. And the newer cameras also, or the newer phones also have, I think, better algorithmic processing of the image. And so sometimes you have more HDR and even more HDR. So we recently were in the mountains on a hiking trip. And so, and so I got a little bit of a comparison of taking mountain pictures with the new phones and also with my Galaxy S10. And my Galaxy S10 still holds up. Maybe the newer phones and are a little bit better. Maybe it's 10%, maybe it's 20% that the picture looks that much better. But I think it is still useful to have my phone. There is also another aspect to this. I am thinking about potentially also sending images from my phone, which is would be kind of a, another use of my phone. And then, of course, again, there would be the argument for potentially upgrading my phone. But then there also would be the cost. And the newer phones don't sell at 512 gigabytes of internal storage. But the newer phones sell at 128 gigabytes, or maybe 256, and then they don't have an SD card slot. So the big advantages of having this old phone is that I do have a headphone jack. I can't just plug in a microphone and use it for recording video. Even though I cannot really continuously charge my device or simultaneously charge my device at the same time, because if you do this, then there is usually a noise that is recorded on the audio that's the charging noise. So I think the charging is disrupting basically the signal to a certain extent, which then is usually present. I did record a couple of videos with with it like this. Now, the only kind of solution around this would be, uh, I think, to have the microphone connected via USB-C, so to use a USB-C hub, which I did, I think, for quite some time, and then to record maybe with a microphone that is USB, and then additionally charge the device also. So to basically have a USB-C hub, which has a charging input, maybe USB-C or something else, and then also to have a microphone input that would also be digital. And this actually works. So. The USB-C port can be used also as a as a port for connecting hard drives, for example. I was able to, at some points, uh, connect two terabyte hard drives and also, I think, five terabyte hard drives, maybe one or two. It, of course, now depends on the on how much how much power the hub gets. The hub needs to, of course, not be underpowered because this phone here cannot power five different five terabyte drives or four different five terabyte drives. But in theory, this works. There is also this optionality, which is has been introduced maybe on these phones or also maybe on the previous versions, so the Galaxy S9 or S8, that you can use these phones as desktops. So you can plug in basically via USB-C with a hub, you can plug in an external monitor, and this I did for quite some time when my notebook was in repair. Now, it Compared to a notebook, obviously it is just a phone. It is just a phone, I would say maybe it's close to replacing it for 20% of the task. So I try to, uh, for example, continue to book the release for, for a, the, the apartment in which I am living in. And so this was quite an issue. And then also, 
you have the problem with access to storage and so on and so forth so it is not a one-on-one -on -one replacement but nobody also expected this but you can somewhat use it and you can also watch YouTube videos for example uh, streaming it on a 4k screen even but then the Samsung DeX which this is called is only in 1080 at max I don't know if the newer phones are able to output 4k but maybe also who needs this it's not who needs this. Of course it would be nice if at any point in time my phone was basically just a, a smaller version of my a pocket version of my computer, my notebook, but this is not really the case. Now I also have been recently thinking about flip phones and potentially using them also with this standard functionality where you can also use this. And also the flip phones would have the additional advantage, so I'm thinking mostly about the Galaxy flip phones, that you would be able to close the phone. But then again, in terms of durability, if I have this phone falling to the ground and actually both of these phones probably fell hundreds of times to the ground, but, but with this case, usually it's not a problem. I had one phone, I actually had three of these phones, and one phone fell to the ground, so I was outside and onto the asphalt, the, four, the, the phone fell, fell, and so I broke the, I cracked the screen, which I then had to not replace because I sold the phone. I think and I got a replacement phone. So I actually had three of these devices over the last four and a half years and two of which I still am having. To conclude, it has a headphone jack, it has still an SD card slot, it still has 512 gigabytes of storage, which newer phones don't have, even now it's four and a half years later and Moore's law maybe also applied to storage, maybe it doesn't not kick in. Uh, the cameras in the newer devices are maybe a little bit better, but not so much better. The phones are getting slower and slower, which might be an issue, but at least in terms of using one of these phones as my, my camera, it is not that much of an issue. I do have an OBS client installed and I am recording with a uh, software, which is a screen recording or streaming software, which is OBS. And then I am using the video feed, I am using the, the microphone here as a uh, USB audio source. And so in total, I am still... Uh, I probably will keep these phones maybe until I can replace them with phones that maybe have an SD card slot again. Also these phones are potentially waterproof, I did never test this fully, uh, I did test uh, the waterproofage or the waterproofing with a previous device which was the HTC Desire I, so I went to a swimming pool and after 20 minutes basically the device was out for a couple of months.